Breast cancer is the most common female cancer in the United States. It affects uh, one in every eight women during their lifetime. And for the vast majority of women who develop breast cancer, there's never a specific reason or answer that we can provide to them as to why they develop this disease. Um, about 70 to 80 percent of all breast cancer is what we call sporadic, meaning that we think it just occurs based on some sort of interaction between environmental factors, um, genetic background. We don't know for sure, but it, it looks like an isolated case. There's not a significant family history. We call it sporadic breast cancer. Um, and we can't explain those cases at, at current. Uh, there are another 20 to 30 percent that we group into this category of familial breast cancer. And these are families where if you look back through the family history, there's more breast cancer in the family than you would expect to occur by chance. Um, so there's a clustering of breast cancer in these families. Um, and then the, the smallest chunk of breast cancer, five to 10% is hereditary. And these are the cases where we can identify a specific genetic cause, an inherited factor that is actually leading to a significant increase in the lifetime risk of breast cancer. And the hereditary cases are um, the cases that where it's critical for us to do genetic testing to identify the people who are at risk, who can benefit from increased surveillance, can benefit from um, altering their treatment plans, um, and identify people that can get screened early and actually prevent the disease. BRCA Plus has been a very exciting test for us to develop at Ambry. It is uh, an idea that we've had for some time now. We, we, we've known that we wanted to bring this test um, to the clinicians and to their patients. Um, what we were really waiting for the technology to essentially catch up to us to, to make it feasible. Um, what it is is a six gene panel. So if you order BRCA plus, you're gonna get analysis of six genes. And these genes were handpicked because A, they're all associated with high lifetime risks of female breast cancer. So these are the so-called usual suspects when you are evaluating a family for hereditary breast cancer. Um, the second reason that we selected these specific six genes is because they all are very well studied. They all have established clinical management guidelines and that's a really important piece for us because what it means is that when a clinician orders a BRCA plus test for a patient and gets a positive result, regardless of what gene that positive result is in, there will be recommendations, um, management guidelines for them to follow uh, to guide their patient and, and to screen for other cancers that are associated with that finding, um, to get them on the, the proper treatment protocols or proper surveillance protocols. And so that clinical utility piece is really central to this test, the BRCA plus test. As the name implies, BRCA+, plus, um, the BRCA genes are included on this panel. So BRCA1 and 2, um, these are the most well-known of the hereditary, the high-risk hereditary breast cancer genes. They predispose to female breast cancer and ovarian cancer, as well as male breast cancer and prostate cancer. And then there are also associations with um, lower cancer risks, but melanoma and pancreatic cancer in individuals that carry mutations in these two genes. Um, we also include uh, analysis of TP53, which uh, causes Lee-Fermini syndrome, or LFS. And the classic picture of LFS is um, fairly striking. There are um, high lifetime risks of cancer overall. This is a gene that's important in all the cells in our body, so we do see um, tumors develop in multiple body systems in, in these families. Um, but what we're learning about TP53 is they're actually a, a subset of families that don't, don't fit this classic picture of LFS, um, but rather present with breast cancer only. And so a TP53 family, an LFS family, may present very similar to what we classically think of as a BRCA family. So that's three of the six genes. The other three genes, uh, CDH1, is a gene that is most commonly associated with gastric cancer, but we also know that it predisposes to a lobular type of breast cancer. And like TP53, as more clinical data and more testing data emerges for this gene, we're learning that 
there are families out there that don't have the, the stomach cancer component and, and do present as breast cancer only families. Um, STK11 causes a condition known as Poots Jaeger's uh, syndrome, so PJS, and this is a, a rare syndrome and there are a lot of GI manifestations um, in these families. Breast cancer risk is also high for these families, but um, it's it's the rarest finding on the BRCA plus panel. Uh, and then the last one, P10, is a condition where we we know a lot about it and we're continuing to learn a lot about it. And the more we learn about it, the more the more the phenotype expands. So the more families that we're finding that have a p10 mutation that don't fit the classic picture similar to what we talked about with tp53 um, and the other genes so the great thing about brca plus and the thing that we are so excited about is that we're able to offer testing for this really critically important group of hereditary breast cancer genes to patients in a way that costs about as much as they as it would have been to run a single gene through the traditional method. So we're finding answers for more of these families and they're important answers. And we're able to give that data back to the field and learn more about these genes. And so it's great now that the technology is there that we're able to bring this to to the clinic and um, we're we've been getting great responses from clinicians and from patients and we've been finding answers for people.